Hey everybody, it's Unique History Channel. Today we're going to be doing a reading from Fraud, Famine, and Fascism by Douglas Tottle, and we'll be reading Chapter 9, Collaboration and Collusion. On June 30th, 1941, the Nazi army entered Lviv, the capital of western Ukraine. In its vanguard came the German uniform not to go battalion of Ukrainian nationalists under the command of Roman Shukovich. With the collusion of Nazi Abuelhar, the Bandera faction of the Organization of Ukrainian Nationalists immediately set up a so-called Government of Western Ukrainian Lands headed by Yaroslav Zasesko, who had accompanied the Nazi invaders to the city. A pogrom of the live area's Jewish population at once was launched. This was anticipated no of Philip Weiss, a leader of Winnipeg's Holocaust Committee and survivor from Western Ukraine, by the air of fear and terror hanging over the city because of the approaching German army and the public knowledge of the forthcoming pogrom of Jews by Ukrainian nationalists. American writer Saul Friedman, who undertook extensive research on the historical persecution of Jews by Ukrainian nationalists, states in his book Pogromshik, during the first three days of July 1941, the Naktigao Battalion, composed of entirely of Ukrainians under the direction of the Gestapo slaughtered 7,000 Jews in the vicinity of Lemberg. Before their execution, Jewish professors, lawyers, and doctors were made to lick all the steps of four-story buildings and carry garbage in their mouths from house to house, then forced to run a gauntlet of men wearing blue and gold armbands, coincidentally the colors of the Hellehurst Republic, and they were bayoneted to death and was officially termed the Atticon Petulia. Under the band right nationalist clique posing as a government, Many of Liv's non-Jewish writers, intellectuals, and professionals who were known to be hostile to Nazism were also slaughtered. There is an example of the fate of Dr. Taras Merlikirk, a Ukrainian surgeon. Number 516, surgeon drowned in a bathtub, his wife raped in the presence of their children and then bayoneted, and their five-year-old daughter, Maria, was thrown out a window, and their three-year-old son, Mik Mikhail, was shot with a small caliber browning pistol. A Ukrainian Jewish survivor from Kolmoja described the barbers and the Ukrainian nationalists. The moment the Germans came in, the Ukrainian nationalists put on white armbands and they went on a killing spree. Hidden in a bunker with 17 other people, she remembers, we heard a shot close by. Later, a girl and myself went up quietly from the basement. We looked around, went out, and there was a pregnant woman lying. Her baby was moving in her still. She didn't speak, but she was still alive. And we heard something close. We ran away. One eye went up from the bunker on that day and looked through the window to see what was going on. Picture we saw in every race of mind. Ten or twelve Ukrainian police walking by in their high leather boots all covered with blood. And they went to the well, which is at the end of our street, to wash off the blood. Historian Ruben Einstein has chronicled the widespread voluntary help by the Ukrainian nationals to the Nazi exterminationists in Western Ukraine. In his classic Jewish resistance in Nazi-occupied Eastern Europe, he states at the beginning of the Nazi occupation that the ONU leaders, Setsko and Bandera, proclaimed the creation of a free Ukraine and organized a 31,000-strong militia. The militia played the most important part in making it possible for the Eins Einsat Commando to carry out their task of genocide and terror until the middle of August 1941. The militia was then disbanded, and 3,000 cutthroats were allowed to enroll in the Ukrainian Auxiliary Police, which was to play as an abominable role in the annihilation of Jews in Eastern Europe. In the first eight months of Nazi occupation of Western Ukraine, 15% of Galatian Jews, 100,000 people, was slaughtered by the joint actions of the Germans and Ukrainian nationalists, Jewish Canadian survivor, and decorated anti Nazi partisan. Nahum Kohn describes the Ukrainian fascist role in the Holocaust in Ukraine's Valone region. Whenever Jews were slaughtered, four or five Germans would participate, helped by 100 or 200 Ukrainian nationalists. When Ukraine was virtually Judenrein, cleansed of Jews, the Bander Tovsky turned on their Polish neighbors. In his autobiography, Kohn describes how his partisans came to the rescue of Polish inhabitants of the Parshiebab, ravished by Banderite fascists who had slaughtered 40% of the villagers. The Ukrainian nationalists 
perpetrators of pogroms against Jews, both before the war and particularly during the war, are portrayed quite differently in the light in Ukrainian nationalist publications, propagating the famine genocide myth. In the first chapter of Black Deeds of the Kremlin, opens with a full-page portrait honoring the pogromist leader of the nationalist Ukraine, Simon Pelutria, described by historian Gerald Rettlinger as one of the most dubious national heroes of all time. Pelutria was thrown out of Soviet Ukraine by a revolution and joined his law with a foreign adventurist against the USSR. Hoping to return his nationalist clique on the bayonets of foreign troops, he made a deal with Poland, which gave away western Ukraine Galatia to the Poles on April 21st, 1920 treaty. Nationalist-oriented historian John R- J. Rooster admits that while enjoying the hospitality of the Poles during the winter of 1919-1920, Hilaria met with Pilsuski and became convinced that the sole remains of the attained ally, more specifically French support, by was becoming a Polish satellite. Remnants of Pilsuski's Nashus accompanied the 1920 French-backed Polish invasion of Soviet Ukraine which was decisively defeated by the Bolsheviks. The Poles held on to western Ukraine, and Pelutria went off into exile in France. Of the so-called leader, even his colleague, Voldemort Vyachenko, remembers, an unhealthiest maniac soaked in his ears in the blood of a grand jury, politically illiterate and willing to accept reaction to order to preserve his power. Assassinated by a Jew, Shalom Schwarzbard in Paris in 1926 as retribution for the Plutra government's army slaughters of tens of thousands of Jews. Plutra was the symbol used by nationalists to avenge their quote unquote great knights. In July 1941, in Liev, the ONU nationalists declared a day in honor and memory of Plutra and turned the streets red with blood of Jewish victims. As Holocaust historian Lucy De Wash Dewitz. This is in low, the Germans and Ukrainian nationalists in house to house hunt for Jews shot them randomly on the spot, brutally avenging the assassination of Pelutria, notorious anti Semite. Ukrainians staged mammoth programs, slaughtering tens of thousands, carrying off other thousands of Jews to Eisen Group and headquarters. Within hours or days, those Jews who had been taken away were machine gunned in mass to some remote, delicit area. The disaster was epic. Another full-page Black Deeds tributes honors Nazi major and murderer Roman Shekovich, commander of the bloody Nightingale Battalion. Following the organization of his troops into Nazi Schutzmannschaft battalions in the summer of 1941, Shekovich, under Nazi direction, led his men into Belarusia to slaughter partisans, Jews, and peasants. Later in the war, this recipient of the Iron Nazi Iron Cross commanded Ukrainian insurgent army, which... Einstein described as the most dangerous and cruel enemies of surviving Jews, Polish peasants, and settlers, all anti-German partisans. Also renovated in the Black Deeds are a number of clergymen who supported Nazis, blessed the Ukrainian SS movements, and who in other was politically facilitated Nazi occupation. Unlike Skypernik, or father of Vassal Labada, who settled in Edmonton, Metropolitan Andrei Shipatsky and Joseph Shapili were unable to flee the country with the German retreat. They are honored in the black deeds with portraits. Pro nationalist historians John Armstrong notes Shalepsi was personally favored the creation of the Galatian Division 14 Waffen SS, said one of his clergy, Dr. Leba, to act as a chief chaplain. Bishop jo- Joseph Shalepsi conducted service in St. George's Cathedral in Lviv, celebrating the inauguration of the division. Upon the capture of Kiev, Metropolitan Shetsky said the following measure to, hitch to Hitler. As head of the Ukrainian Greek Church, I send your excellency to my heartfelt congratulations on the occasion of the occupation of Ukraine, the gold dome city on the Dnieper Kiev. We see you in as the invincible leader of the insurmountable and glorious German army. And in the case of the destruction and eradication of Bolshevism, which you as further of the great German Reich took as a goal of this campaign assures your excellency the gratitude of all the Christian world. The Ukrainian Greek church knows the historic meaning of the mighty progress of the German nation under your guidance. I shall pray to God for him to bless the victory and shall be the guaranteed enduring peace for your excellency, the German army and the German nation. Like the fascist policemen washing their boots, the well, the Ukrainian nationalists at the 
Banderastasi, SS Auxiliary Militia, are confronted with the problem of washing away the blood spilled during the Nazi, Nazi occupation. Many thousands who fled to Germany and elsewhere in the wake of treaty Nazi armies had to cover up their personal and collective guilt in the Holocaust and the betrayal of their country. There is, in fact, a conscious attempt to disguise the past of such persons to distort the history of the role of Ukrainian nationals in the Nazi Holocaust. Such cover-ups are sub-themes in the famine genocide campaign, for the credibility of the famine genocide allegations is undermined by direct association with wartime collaboration and atrocities. For example, during a 1984 Winnipeg teacher symposium at which he was speaking on famine genocide, James Mays asked why he thought the Ukrainian nationals supported Hitler in the Nazi invasion of Ukraine. Mays replied that supported Hitler only for a brief period at the beginning of the war. But the relationship between German Nazism and Ukrainian nationalism was no brief honeymoon. Both represented forms of extreme nationalism, which by the late 1920s had reached some common ideological grounds. Two documents from the 1920s indicate the direction of Ukrainian nationalism's transition period. So first, Dikala, the Ten Commandments of Ukrainian Nationalism. Originally published in Surma in 1929, all members of the organization of Ukrainian nationalists were expected to remember Zane. Attaining Ukraine... Uh, Ukrainian national state or die in battle for it. Two, do not allow anyone to fame the glory or the honor of your nation. Three, remember the great days of our effort. Four, be proud. In fact, you are in the air of the struggle for the glory of Voldemir's triant. Five, avenge the death of the great knights. Six, do not speak of cause whenever possible, but only with whomever necessary. Do not hesitate to commit the greatest crime if the good of the cause demands it. Regard your enemies of your nation with hate and petrify. Neither requests nor threats nor torture nor death compel you to betray a secret. And ten, aspire to strengthen the riches and the size of the Ukrainian state by even means of enslaving foreigners. Similarly, if we on a more intellectual level, one finds mistakenly fascist notions and misdiscretations and will of bevoins on these state-minded youth. The clearest feature of a person in the universe is his ability to master his living and non-living environments even in space and time. Indivisible in their essence, ideas and actions when systematically executed are means to his mastery. Beyond them, there is only chaos. The eternal struggle with chaos is the basic task of the person. The ideal is the eventual subjugation of chaos by those persons. And the greatest imperative for Ukrainians, the struggle for the Ukrainian perfect nation, is simultaneously a struggle against chaos in the familial and societal spheres. The struggle is the only possible the training of the leaders who will systematically rule over these spheres without any compunctions to destroy everything hostile within them and their environment. The creation of such leaders is the basic task of the nation, and the ideal of the nation where the perfect individual exists only for the name of the nation is its perfection. The character of the organization of Ukrainian youth must correspond to the character of the Ukrainian nation. The most fundamental and most famous organization instinctively accepted by everyone in Ukraine is that military praise and song and ballad. By the end of the 1920s, the leadership of the exiled the exiled Ukrainian nationalists had to consult around the organization of Ukrainian nationalists, OUN, under the Vazad Eugene Konvillitz. Established in 1927, the OUN was based on the League of Ukrainian Nationals, which had been sent to a joint convention of the Union of Ukrainian Fascists. The Ukrainian Fascist Federation and the Union for the Liberation of Ukraine in 1925. The only organ, Rosbuda Natsdi, which traces evidence of anti Semitism, which was widespread in the Ukrainian Nationalist movement. Ukraine is jeopardized by the Jews. The latter have not only done us a lot of harm, but will keep doing us harm as long as Ukrainians fail to apply the necessary means of self-defense. During the 1930s, the fascist outlook of the OUN was completed by a terror assassination in Poland. Tactics indicated in the Ukrainian nationalist paper Meta. Ukrainian nationalists must be prepared to apply the method of struggle against communism, not excluding mass physical extermination, even if the latter implies sacrificing millions of lives. In earlier 1930, the OUN journal Rosbada Nazi proclaimed, We shall be merciless on the great day which surely come. And there shall be mercy for neither young 
or the old, it is not surprising that in January 1932, the League of Nations branded the OUN a terroristic organization. If any of you crazy, nationalism and Nazism was not confined to Europe. In Canada, anti-Semitism, praise of Hitler, and racism or and fascism were openly expressed in Ukrainian nationalist journals in the 1930s. In Winnipeg, a Ukrainian language journal, in addition, of the anti-Semitic Protocols of the Elders of Zion was published in 1934 and reprinted as late as 1959. The following passage can be found in the 1938 issue of Church Life, Organ of Ukrainian Catholics in Winnipeg. He is the greatest man at the present, is Adolf Hitler. He changed maps of Europe and united all of Germans in one state. Together with Mussolini, he has resisted the Bolshevist invasion of Europe and stepped on the necks of the Bolsheviks in Spain and declared that they shall not advance has to be fuddled Russia. Hitler is saving Europe and her culture from the Bolsheviks. In the same year, Canadian newspaper United Hetman Association, followers of Hetman Palavol Sokarpovsky, stated it shall become impossible for the French nationals to call themselves French. The very name invites attacks of the Yids. Billions of Yid dollars have been mobilized for the pacification of European goys. In a similar vein, Nova, Shikel, New Pathway, Winnipeg's Voice, the ONU, the Ukrainian National Federation published, In Russia, Yid terrorists killed 28 bishops, 1,215 priests, 6,575 teachers, 8,000 doctors, 54,000 village elders, 260,000 soldiers, 105,000 policemen, 48,000 ganneries, and 12,500 police chiefs, 355,000 Intellectuals, 192,000 workers, 815,000 pub- peasants. No one objected. But today, when Jews aren't even beaten, only frightened, everyone hollers. One notes, while well, yesterday alleged perpetrators of genocide were labeled Jews, today the label has changed to Russians. Anti-Semitism has a long history in national ideology. A particularly vile example of Nazi-like hate appeared in the January 1935 issue of Kritik, printed by Ant- Anthony Helica, a social credit member of the parliament from Vergenville, Alberta. It blamed Jews for the famine. The descent of, blo- descent of bloodsuckers who exploited Ukraine. His ancestors robbed our fathers of the last trip to the land. His ancestors held the keys to our temples. His ancestors were informers against us. His race barred the path of our formation of our state. His race murdered the leader of the glorious Ukrainian Republic. His race besmirched the world through our great Chemlowski. His race is responsible for the unprecedented terror in the Ukraine. His race murdered by exiles, tortured, famine, not only millions of our brothers and sisters, but also millions of innocent children of the Ukraine. His race is abused, debauched, and polluted, and corrupted the defiled mis- majesty of Ukraine. With no mention, anti-Semitism, a click. Marin Chok writes of Hylnaka and Ukrainian Canadians of history. For his interest in the play of the refugees, Hanaka soon gained recognition as the guardian of the third post war immigration to Canada. The ideological background of Ukrainian nationalism was a contributing factor to support Hitler fascism. Ukrainian nationalism ideologue Dmitry Donstov, who was allowed to settle in Canada after World War II, attempted to justify Hitler's seizure of power in Germany, describing pre Nazi conditions. The the third factor was the decay of the international Jewish community, who attacked the collapsed country like locusts in order to jointly with the victors free to pose it to smear literature, art, music, theatrical art, visual pornography to smear pure art with the ideas of Bolshevism. Well connected to Nazi intelligence circles following Hitler's seizure of power, the ON fascist views, ONU's fascist views, were directly related to wartime alliance with the Third Reich. The xenophobic, anti democratic, anti Semitic nationalism of the OUN. Messed easily with Nazism. Following Konopsol's death in 1939, the organization of Ukrainian nationalists split into two factions B, headed by Stefan Bandera, and M, by Andrei Meklik. Testimony of German Abor Abiwader Officer Aaron Schultz the Nuremberg War Crime Trials, revealed that both Meklik and Bandera were on the Nazi payroll prior to Hitler's invasion of the Soviet Ukraine. Ukrainian Nationalist Battalions were trained in Germany prior to the war, and some were used by the Nazis in their 1939 invasion of Poland. As the Nationalist's own Excitopedia states, the first Ukrainian unit was formed in the eve of the Polish-German War, approximately 600 men strong. It consisted of 
Roman soldiers at the Carpathian Siege, commanded by Roman Ceausescu, and it marched into Galatia with the German army in September 1939. When Hitler invaded the Soviet Union in June 1941, his forces included the Night Gau and Berlin battalions of Ukrainian nationalists. The blood record of butchery by the Netigal Battalion of Jews and Poles in Libya will never be forgotten. The formation of these units is admired, admitted by National Encyclopedia on the Eve of, the eve of World War II as a result of an agreement between some German authorities and the Bandera OUN faction, two Ukrainian volunteer detachments. The Nightingale were formed in German territory, took part in the military operations of the German army, and in late 1941 they were reorganized into the police battalion 201 and deployed in Belarusia. Thus, we have seen the Ukrainian Nationalist Alliance with Nazism predated the beginning of the war. At some time, the alliance was not so without conditions. While the Nationalists pinned their hopes on Nazis to be able to gain control of Ukraine, German fascists were not about to receive any part of their power. United by their opposition to the Soviet Union, the Nazis' direct rule of Ukraine also stood as an obstacle to Ukrainian Nationalist ambitions. This contradiction has been wildly exaggerated in the post-war cover-up of Nationalist collaboration and complicity with the Nazi Holocaust. It is hoped that the retroactive Transformer and the junior partner collaborates into an anti-Nazi patriot win them, ex- win them acceptance of the allies of democracy, the better to serve the contemporary anti-Soviet crusade. <coughs> Ian Barani, for example, offers the following alibi in the Black Keys of the Kremlin. Ukrainians are not war criminals because they fought against Hitler and Stalin. They fought against both before the war, and they fought against them both during the war. Of course, no one has claimed that Ukrainians are such as war criminals, for all most Ukrainians were in a position to do so fought against Hitler. But if by Ukrainians are raised to the nationalists, then he stood as a God-condemned liar to the statue of Goebbels himself. The Ukrainians who fought Hitler were in fact among the targets of the nationalist armed units. And who is I- even Ivan Borani? During the Nazi occupation, he was one of the few Ukrainian writers permitted to have works published through the Nazi-controlled Ukrainian publishing house. That is, publish was Nazi-authorized, as confirmed by Ukraine, a concise encyclopedia. Late in 1939, by permission of the German authorities, the Ukrainian publish house was established in Krakow, Poland, in close relationship with the Ukrainian Central Committee. The Ukrainian publishing house had the exclusive right to publish Ukrainian newspapers, journals, and books with General Gouvermente. One note about this collaboration is commenced in the German-occupied Poland, a full year and a half between the Nazi invasion of the Soviet Union. His authority was later extended to the Nazi-occupied areas of Ukraine. And also published pro-Nazi Ukrainian, since Volin, Kurowski, Visti, in Litskivitsi, is her name of view, it was also important to help German political, literary, and social control over Ukrainians living under occupation. Kresti castings on some of the proof of anti Nazi combat. The nationalists and their apologists claim that the Ukrainian Insurgents Army, UPA, was a patriotic national liberation army which stove to drive the Nazi from Western Ukrainian territory. The Canadian Institute of Ukrainian Studies at the University of Alberta, the publisher of the Canadian edition of Harvest of Sorrow was published in a book which the OUN Banderas Upa is not even described on par with the French resistance. Ikhor Kaminsky, for example, states in the Hitler's occupation of Ukraine, the nationalist propaganda movement in Ukraine had considerable influence on the weakening of German work for the Nice. In reality, the so-called UPA partisans took pressure up Nazi front lines by helping to clean out Soviet partisans and here are the German rear areas of supply and occupation. Let us examine the fabric where the authors like Kaminsky attempt to weave their historical disguise. Kaminsky utilizes inventions about non-existent clashes between OUN Vendera's UPA and Nazis. For example, he claims the chief of staff of German SA, Victor Luzzi, was killed by a UPA detachment on the highway between Kaval and Brest in May 1943. The fact that the other national historians and their followers give a different contrary locations for the alleged fascination of the Lutz does not add credibility to his post-war invention. The truth of the matter is that Lutz was injured in an auto accident near Berlin and died in Potsdam hospitals, hundreds of kilometers from where the nationalists claimed the UPA killed him. According to Goebbels' diaries, Lutz's funeral was attended by Hitler, Goebbels, and other top-ranking Nazis, 
as a result of Lucius Mishap Goebbels writes, Hitler warned the German leadership that cars bearing Nazi party plates would limit their speed to 50 miles per hour. Elsewhere, Kamansky implies that a German anti partisan offense was directed by the National CPA. <clears throat> While it's true that the nationalist UPA partisans fought in Berlin in this period, they were not fighting the Nazis. Com- composed of criminals and executors, the former men of the hated Ukrainian police, security joiners, SS, and fascist legionaries in the UPA and nationalist gangs were certainly known for their anti-Nazi combat. As Eisenstein states, a shirt of German assistance in arms, and when necessary, Outright military corporation, the UPA gangs, which became known as the Bonder Stasky, proved themselves under the command of Shuksas, known as Tadas Schuppernig, the most dangerous and cruel enemies of surviving Jews. Polish peasants and settlers, all anti German partisans, the fanati- fanaticism and nationalistic madness of the Bonderushi, Bulosti, and other Ukrainian nationalist gangs reached depths that appeared incredible and to the Soviet and Jewish partisans, whose ability to be horrified by what men could do was blunted by their daily experiences of the Nazi New Order. The Jewish partisan Belachik Flynn has left the description of the entire Polish villages wiped out their inhabitants in early torn and raped before being slaughtered with knives and axes, babies murdered in the same kind of savagery as would then the fate of many Jewish children. Kamansky and his ilk do not have an avial tax in trying to transform Hitler's Ukrainian auxiliaries and terrorists into anti-Nazi partisans. But then it's not the first time we have encountered such duplicity in Ukrainian nationalist portraits of their history. Not surprisingly, the reminiscence of scholarship demonstrated in famine genocide accounts two-thirds of the evidence for Kamensky's assertions come from ideological colleagues. Out of 49 references of Chapter 5 of Hitler's occupation of Ukraine use substantiation for the alleged anti-fascist role of the UPA. No fewer than 28 come from nationalist apologist Kravyatchek and 5 from anti-Semitic anti-Semite Petro Mirchuk. Similarly distorted, and cannot pass over as Mace is his role of Ukrainian 14 Waffen SS formed in 1943 with the OUN, OUN support and reconstituted after his crushing defeat at Brody in 1944. The 14 Waffen SS division's main function was brutal anti-partisan work in several countries. Ukrainian nationalists and their apologists generally seek to give the impression that the Lesin Division, under, unlike under Waffnesses, was almost a patriotic Boy Scout organization that had no political attachment to the Nazi cause. History shows otherwise in this 1943 appeal for relations to join the SS unit. <clears throat> the long awaited moment has arrived when the Ukrainian people have begun this opportunity to come out of the guns of this most grievous foe. Muscovite Jewish Bolshevism. The fear of the great German Reich has agreed to the formation of a separate volunteer Ukrainian volunteer militia under the name SS Reich Girls Division. Halachian, and you must stand soldier soldier with the unbeatable German army and destroy once for all the Jewish Bolshevist monster. On May 16, 1944, SS Chief Heinrich Himmler congratulated the officers, officers of the 14th Waffen SS Division, for having imposed the improved the beautiful Ukrainian landscape by ridding it of Jews. Himmler added that he was aware nothing would please the division more than have the same treatment to the Poles, but the timing of the action was to be decided by Hitler, the man whom they pledged absolute obedience. The 14 Waffen SS, led by Nazi officers from the top practically down to the company level, was no independent Ukrainian nationalist command. It was instrumental in giving military training to the UPA. And this could have also taken place with the planning, knowledge, and approval of the top SS command and the German officers leading the division. Indeed, certain nationalist historians will admit that the UPA was assisted by the 14th Waffen SS and the SS veteran and division historian in Toronto. Washo Vera wrote in Visiti Combata, a Ukrainian SS veteran's magazine. While recalling the fairly well well known facts that the personnel trained in the division fourteen Waffen SS had become the backbone of the UPA, she mentioned that the UPA command also sent groups of its people to direct the proper receive proper military training. To reinforce the UPA, which was left on the native land after the Nazi retreat, particular commanders and instructors. 
The assessment of the UPA as a Nazi tool appears to be shared by certain sections of the Nationalists, perhaps hoping to distance themselves from the UPA's bloody record. The Nationalist publication, Ukraine's Shemetsky, admitted that the UPA was influenced and formed by the Nazi standard and had acquired the whole of the Nazi mentality. Further, it was not the combat union of the Ukrainian people, but merely a Ukrainian Waffen SS OUN. Ukrainian Nationalist Service to Hitler's Third Reich did not end with the expulsion from the Nazis in 1944. Further, U.S. historian John Armstrong, usually sympathetic to the Nationalists, admits after the Germans were driven out of the Ukraine and continuing to early 1945, German military agencies airdrop supplies to UPA units. Most German officers by then regarded them as a useful harassment to Soviet supply lines. As we have seen, collaboration between Nazis and Ukrainian Nationalists began long before the war and continued through the war and even after the Germans were completely driven out of Ukrainian territory. The Nationalists were firmly locked into the Nazi occupation machine. Their police and punitive units mass murdered Jews and Ukrainians alike. Vast numbers of Ukrainians were also rounded up with the help of Ukrainian collaborators for shipment to Germany as slave labor. Thousands of actions were carried out by the Nationalists, most SB, UPA, and Ukrainian police, it's often under German supervision. Nationals recruited group troops served Hitler in Ukraine. Poland, Belarusia, Czechoslovakia, Hungary, and Yugoslavia. Ukrainian collaborators assisted in the murder of hundreds of thousands desk camps in Treblinka, Sobibor, and Yenskwa and Treniki. Such was the anti-Nazi struggle for whom those nationalists today would present as national liberation fighters. And quote-unquote, here's the Ukrainian people and patriots who struggled for free Ukraine. Okay, thank you.